Some children will be going back to school uh, later this week. A majority perhaps will be going back uh, at the start of next week. And there seems to be an inundation of claims being made to the relevant government departments, including the Department of Social Protection. Jonathan Healy has the details. Uh, yeah, Damien, this fund was previously administered by the HSE and I remember reporting over the last two years how slow it was in processing these claims. It took an awful long time for the money to reach the people who deserved it and who needed it. Um, it's not a huge amount. It's about 200 quid if you have a child under the age of 11 and then it goes up I think to about 300 uh, for children who are older who still uh, need their clothing and footwear covered for starting the school term. The Minister for Social Protection, Joan Burton, was in the News Talk studio. Minister, you mentioned this issue of, of back to school uh, and lunchtime here on News Talk have been looking into this issue. Now it seems as if uh, many struggling families are going to have to wait until well into October in order to receive some of their allowances for school clothing and for footwear. And there's a backlog of tens, or a huge backlog, tens of thousands of applications and a massive backlog. How can that be happening? Well, because it, these are people who made new applications and who made new applications a couple of months ago. Uh, the big change, as I just said, in social welfare is that we have 47,000 more people unemployed. Uh, these are people who made new applications. Uh, we're dealing with those applications. We were getting uh, in early July uh, 3,000 applications a day. The staff and social welfare offices around the country were getting 3,000 applications a day. Those applications have to be assessed. They have to be examined. We have a process and I am absolutely confident that everybody who is entitled uh, to that support uh, will get that support but, but it takes how long, time. How long are they going to have to wait? Uh, it, it, we have uh, taken on extra staff um, the work is done in Donegal the staff there are working flat out we have uh, a phone line uh, established to help people and uh, the number of applications is now falling it's down to about a thousand a day uh, it's, so the demand in terms of this particular scheme is enormous. Uh, some of the people applying for the scheme are not entitled to the scheme. Some of the people applying for the scheme are very much entitled to the scheme. But a lot of people who are applying to the scheme deserve to get that money. Minister for Social Protection, Joan Burton, uh, speaking to us here on News Talk earlier. We have new figures from her department, uh, only released in the last half hour or so. Of the 69,000 claims received, 26,200 have been processed, of which 20,000 have been paid, about 147,000 households benefiting, Damien. Only 2,000 have been refused and 3,600 returned because there was insufficient information with the remaining 600 were duplicate claims. But 69,000 claims made, only 26,200 have been processed and the kids are almost back in school. That seems to be the story as we understand it to date. Uh, lots of uncertainty and questions about when people will be approved for the scheme and indeed when they will get their money from the relevant government departments. We're joined now by John Mark McCafferty, who's Head of Social Justice and Policy for the St. Vincent de Paul, which does Trojan work, especially at this time of the year. We're also joined by Philip McCabe, who's Development Manager with the Citizens Information Service, a very important organisation which keeps, keeps people appraised of their rights. Uh, Philip McCabe, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Damien. Now, um, the, as, as I understand it, um, the department is, as Joan Burton said, processing mm. these claims in Donegal and is trying to take on extra staff as we speak to deal with the uh, backlog. What's your understanding in relation to the, the this pace at which the applications are being processed? Well, if you can imagine, <coughs> Damien, that first of all, I should say that the 127,000 people who got this scheme last year, they automatically got it in June this year. So that was a change that the department brought in, that the people didn't really have to apply again. And that was a very good move on the department's behalf. So but they, they, what they said then was anybody who didn't get their payment in June should apply. And as the minister said in your programme this morning, the 3,000 applications arrived every single day for the first two weeks of July. Now, people were applying and they are being processed. But if you can imagine, I mean, this scheme was launched by the department, or announced publicly in June, and it's open from June to September. The difficulty we have, and the difficulty, and I'm not standing up for the department, but the difficulty, as I say it is, that people are in my office today applying for the scheme now because they still have the authorities of September to do it. I would have thought that if, if people are going to apply, the earlier they would have applied, the better chance they had of getting the payment before they went back to school. And at the moment, the delay in the department is, is averaging six to eight weeks. 
So, yeah, I, I've been told that the uh, applications are being processed at the rate of a thousand a day in some cases. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, but when you say there's a difference between process, one of the difficulties that the, the department has, and again, I sound like I'm talking to the department, and I'm not, is because I see there, we, we get the queries coming to us. A person applies for their back to school clothing and footwear allowance, and sometimes they just apply, but they don't give the department, when they're making a new application, all the relevant or necessary information in order for the, de- the department to make a decision. And what we're trying to say to people here in the Monaghan area, and it's, it's replicated throughout with my colleagues around the country, is that when people come into our offices, we go through the application with them to ensure that they know exactly what they have to tell the department in relation to how, what they should get. You know, the, if you take it from the department, said there, your, your colleague there said 2,000 applications have been refused. Now, 3,600 were, ret- were returned because there was insufficient information. Now, if you take that figure, the amount of time that was involved in processing that application before it was even refused but others could be dealt with. So it, it's a kind of a log- logistical nightmare for the department at this moment in time in dealing with all these applications. Yeah, but the, the, the figures we have now, the latest number we have is that 69,000 applications have been received on top of the 127,000 households that go through because they're parallel copies of essentially what went before. Right. So that's you're up nearly to 200,000 at this stage. It's, it's a monstrous administrative task. It is in, in, in it's a short space of time. And uh, when will the people actually... Res- n- be know where they stand. When will the families know where they stand in relation to this money? I think the precise number uh, for a child in secondary is uh, three hundred and five. Actually, is is correct, the, that's the, the correct to- total? Yeah. When will people actually know where they stand, and when will they get their money? Well, by, by, the way it is, if the application has been made, in fairness, the department are, as, as I understand it, because we would be calling them, like, and we are calling them on behalf of on people's behalf. So, so many turns up in our office, we made application. We check the date when the application was made and we say, right, you made the application, it's four weeks ago. And we're saying the average time for this is six, six to eight weeks is our understanding. Yeah, is but, it true that the department, Joan Burton's department, has written to the Citizens Information Centres telling people not to make queries in relation to this uh, for, uh, for the first eight weeks? Well, I have not heard that. Well, that's, but, but, that's but, what's being claimed. Well, it may, it may be claimed, but it certainly hasn't come to me. But what I would, what I would know myself is... Once the department tells us that it's taken six to eight weeks for anything, and not just this department, any other department, then there's little point in us ringing them and saying to them, any hope here. Now, if it's the case, we ha- if, if where I consider as the manager here that I have an absolutely urgent need out of the world case, where it's so severe that these people are on the broad- bread line completely, I will then decide that I will call in the department to see, can I do anything to help this one along? Because yeah, for sure. And everybody will do that. Like we're, people are at the moment, the bigger problem we have at the moment, though, Damien, is, as I see it, we have people here who are on the bread line and they need the money and they haven't got the money. For sure, and there's dangers in all of this. Now, that's, I want you to stay on the line for the moment. Uh, John Mark McCafferty of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Last year, the number of uh, people applying for this was about 180,000. I think it'll go toward, uh, towards 200,000 this year. It's doubled since the uh, height of the Celtic Tiger in 2006. And people were still being paid in Halloween after Halloween, November and into December last year. It's going to happen again, isn't it? What do people do for the cash that they need to, to put their kids in the right clothes and to get them the books in the meantime? Uh, good afternoon, Damien. Good afternoon to you. Um, well, that is the worry uh, for, for many families and it's the worry for, for the organisation as we try and assist a number of families uh, make that move to back to school for their children. Um, and I, I suppose... People um, budget according to um, the immediate needs, and um, uh, for many of the, the families that we're assisting, um, they're looking at kind of urgent needs first, and the long-term stuff might not get uh, seen to. Um, people are also trying to juggle energy bills, uh, gas bills, electricity bills, food costs, as well as other back-to-school costs. Yeah, they have the utility thing coming in on top of them as well in relation to ESB and board gosh bills and so forth. Yeah. At the same time of the year, the, the demand for energy goes up, obviously. But what, do, what, are, what are families typically doing if, they're, if, they're, if there's a huge delay in processing these payments? through the system mm. and the amount involved I think Joe Burton said today was ni- nearly 90 million um, do they go to money lenders do they tap uh, their other family members or wh- what's it's the story yeah. I mean, sometimes families may do without certain things um, uh, in order to kind of pay for the uh, 
the, 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 the back to school clothing and footwear. Um, people may go to money lenders. Um, they may go into arrears with other existing bills. Um, they may approach ourselves, and we are there for for families who are genuinely in need and uh, looking for assistance at this time. You know, if there's if there's a significant backlog, we are saying to people as well to approach the community welfare um, officer if they are in genuine need and they have uh, a very substantial kind of delay in in this payment. You know, so I mean, we are we are concerned for those families, and we are there for those families, as are the citizens' information uh, services in terms of providing information. Also, um, we're asking people to consider going to the Money Advice and Budgeting Service, which is free, independent um, service for, for people. It's an impartial service uh, to assist people with managing their do, budgets. Do people like the community welfare officers, uh, John Mark, do they have discretion in giving people money temporarily to get them over the point uh, where they will finally get the money back from the government departments? Well, they do have discretion. And, um, I mean, while I understand, you know, that the... Uh, Ideally, uh, these payments would be made before the beginning of the school year. Um, some families will find themselves in a substantial, you know, there'll be a substantial lag time, a substantial delay. Um, and families may find them that they have very little option but to approach the community welfare officer for, for um, some kind of um, uh, bridging amount of money to assist them to, to buy their, their clothing and the footwear. But we're also asking schools um, to be understanding in relation to the households, the families that um, are would normally be in receipt of back-to-school clothing and footwear, that they give them a bit of flexibility there in terms of um, the school uniform situation, you know, because not everyone will have um, the the means to, to to buy their school uniform before the beginning of September. Yeah, what end do, of what does that mean uh, in practice? Did they go back to school wearing their own ordinary clothes? Is that right? Well, I mean... If, if people have to, um, then I think schools need to take a pragmatic approach uh, that, it's, that that children go back wearing something which is um, you know respectable um, and, and reasonable, but um, but not quite the school uniform. Well, I mean, if if there are individual families that are waiting. Um, for this money, and they really, really need this money, and they can't procure their, they can't buy their, um, their uniform and their, and their clothing until they get that that amount of money. And if the um, uh, community welfare officer can't um, assist them, then I, I'm not sure what other option they have. Uh, Philip McCabe of uh, Citizens Information Service, uh, do you have a, an idea, any ideas about how this all could be solved and dealt with in a more streamlined way? Because the the scheme itself is, seems to be exploding in scale. We, at the, unfortunately, at this time of the year, every year, we seem to have the same conversation. Now, what I, I suppose a good idea would be if schools will advise their children through letters to the parents that if they want to apply for the back-to-school clothing and football allowance, they should make their application, uh, if they haven't got it already, in the month of June. You see, if it, when people are leaving school, it, the last thing they want to think about then is September, or going back to school in September. But usually, in the, we're now in the end of, in, into August now, in the middle of August, and the schools are open in another week so, or so for everybody, and everybody's panicking now. But if people had applied, as the minister said, there was 3,000 that received in the first two weeks of July every single day, those applications that were coming in at that rate, if they started coming in in June, uh, a little bit earlier, if we give the department a little bit more time and flexibility in actually processing the application... Yeah, but the, the problem, September, Philip, is a lot of families are not entirely functional, and there's still applications coming in at the rate of 1,000 a day now. I know they peaked in July at 3,000 a day, but people are still queuing up, they're still uh, but beginning that, that, the process, but, even as we speak, within days of going back to school. But that's my very point. You're, they're, yeah. they're applying a week before they go back to school. And that's the very point that I'm making. They, they applied three months ago. And the scheme, the, the department, uh, I sound like I'm speaking for the world, I'm certainly I'm not doing that, but the department did announce back in June that the scheme was launched. And it was in the public... In the public well, meeting. we never accuse you of being a spokesman <laughs> for the department anyway. <laughs> but I just say, that, I, I, people who came to our office last June now have got their money. They're, they're, they've qualified. So they're in the system and they're there. And people who applied last year didn't have to apply again. And that's a great move. I, I just say to people, please apply earlier. But to come, come back to something that John said there, in relation to them, the, 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 the problems that are going to arise. Unfortunately for a lot of people, they're now going to money lenders. We have come across that here in the modern area where they're going to money lenders looking for assistance. And this is a, a terrible a retrograde step for them altogether. And what, if, if, if a family borrowed 500 quid, because that's the average that a family claims, say, two, for two kids for typically, what would they have to pay the money lender back for the Well, unfortunately, quid? that's something, all we know is it's a lot. 
but we can't find out exactly what it is. But it is really, really high interest rate. What are you and talking about? Six or seven hundred to go back? Yeah, certainly talking. Yeah. It's scary. You're, you're into scary figures when you when you get that department. What we said a lot of people is we have often come to us and officers. We ask them, are the members of the local credit union or credit unions wherever they live, and why don't they join and put in a few euros over the year? Now sometimes they don't have us have it, but if they open up an account in the credit union, the credit unions are very, very helpful to people, particularly when we come back to school time. If somebody has a few euros lodged in the in the credit union account, the credit union and depending on who they are, and they've taped it up, of course, as well, but they are amenable to give, give a loan for people to get them over the tide of this for going back to school particularly, and other, and other events throughout the year as well, of course. OK, well, listen, we're going to stick with the story and see what happens as the school year begins. Uh, Philip McCabe, Development Manager with Citizens Information Service, uh, thank you very much for joining us and explaining where you're coming from on that, and we will never accuse you of uh, acting as a spokesperson for the department. And John Mark McCafferty, Head of Social Justice and Policy for St. Vincent de Paul Society, uh, thank you very much also for joining us. Loads of messages coming in on the text line 53106. Labour's shouting about delays in the scheme last year when Minister O'Quiv was in this hot seat. No improvement on under Labour. Same old story. Fancy talk. The vulnerable suffer, says John. Eric has an interesting idea. He says families avail- wanting to avail of this should go to approved shops and the shop should get paid directly by the department. They should get their books and their their uh, uniforms in time. I'm a secondary teacher in Limerick. Many families who get this grant don't spend it on school clothes. That's a message we've got in. And a listener says, my wife was and I were refused because we're four euros 36 over the limit that's the means test for this scheme uh, we live on our credit card says our listener we never knew we could get it once a child turned to the age of two and I've been unemployed for the last three years loads more besides coming in on 53106 thanks for all your messages it's uh, time now for Jonathan with the news headlines yeah just to recap on those figures Damien that we brought you a little bit earlier on in the programme we're talking of course about the delays in the delivery of the back to school allowance for those on social welfare this is money uh, that is primarily uh, to be spent on buying clothes and shoes. Not a huge amount of money, as I said, 200 euro or so if you're under the age of 11. I think it goes up to 300 euro for children over that point. Uh, the Department of Social Protection saying that 69,000 claims have been received this year for the scheme. Only 26,200 have been processed so far and only 2,000 have been paid. And it is, of course, worth pointing out that some schools are reopening this week. Most of them will be fully reopened by next week. Uh, yet here we have parents. Uh, who haven't been given the money that they are, whether you like it or not, entitled to under the scheme. Listeners are still sending in loads of messages. Uh, loads of messages here about the uh, going back to school. Never mind the handouts. Why don't they tackle the actual cost of the uh, school products, says James. If you ring them, you only get an automated service. You can't speak to a human being at all with your queries. Well, as you heard earlier, they don't want you to uh, lodge queries no. for eight weeks. This delay in the back-to-school allowance is a disgrace. All schools should have a two-week moratorium on children wearing school uniforms to avoid discrimination. That comes from a listener called Anne. Uh, they can wear their last term's uniform, but this is kids starting school. Sorry, you don't understand that. How does it cost €300 Euro for a child? What about the taxpayer, says Pat in Cork? And um, loads more besides... I, mean, I, I went out this morning, I was talking to people in Cork uh, about this, about the cost of going back to school, because it's not something I've personally experienced of just yet, but and some of the figures that were coming back um, to 200 euro for uniforms uh, 500 euro for books that was just one woman who had two kids that was 700 euro um, that she had had to spend so imagine if you're on social welfare and you're trying um, to get this money from the department and you can't get your hands on it and your child is either starting school or needs a new uniform next week it must be very frustrating